Good morning, Rough Scholars. Welcome back to uh, Survive the Night. Interesting little fun fact. I started. I accidentally grabbed this book first when I meant to grab this one. Uh, when I was recording for this one. Anyway, I'm recording this a day early so that um, I'm not going to miss a day after missing so many days because I have things to do Tuesday morning. That way I can just upload these and then be on with my day. Anywho, we are in chapter 11. Remember, the last one ended up being uh, chapters 9 and 10. Page 113. Dang it. Sam Hubbard is in front of me. He's so close that I can see the freckles scattered across his tan cheeks and smell the herbal essence of, um, shampoo he steals from his little sister. That sounds weird. I hold my breath, worried that if I move, this might all disappear. Sam clears his throat. We should probably go find the others, he says. Yeah, I say. He still doesn't move. I feel like the seconds tick past. Sam closes his eyes and swears under his breath. This is difficult, he says. A lump forms in my throat. I know. I'm sure he's going to walk away now, but instead he leans closer. His nose brushes against my forehead. And his breath tickles in my ear. What? What? I'm uncomfortable. I sink into him. His chest is warm and hard. I feel his heart pound beneath his chin. Uh, his chin. What? His thin t-shirt. There we go. I need to get some water. Music echoes from the subway station, and neon glow lights flicker in the distance. Otherwise, the tunnel is quiet, empty. None of the other partiers have ventured this far from the dancing. I tilt my face towards Sam and try and study his expression in the darkness. This is the closest we've been in months, and it feels like he's a million miles away. I want to press my body closer to his. I'm uncomfortable. I want to run my fingers down the line of his back. Why? But I'm not sure if that's allowed. How close can I get before he pulls away again? Sam, I whisper. He stiffens. I want beats at my chest like a living thing, but I lost my, or I lose my nerve. I shake my body away from him, trying to ignore the fire spreading through my cheeks. We're supposed to go back to the party. Remember? I curse myself as soon as the words leave my mouth. Sam frowns. Is that what you want? He asks. What do you want? I've been asking myself that question all night. He pushes a strand of hair behind my ear. I move closer. And did you come up with an answer? Preferably something that doesn't make me uncomfortable? Sam lowers his face to mine without another word and kisses me. A stubble tickles my cheek. The world around, my, around me fades, and I'm only aware of him and us and being here together. I weave my arms around his shoulders, pulling him close. My fingers slide through his hair. What? Sam pulls away, just for a second, and icy air finds all the spaces where his hands once were. Maybe we should go slower this time, he whispers. Not rush into anything. I kiss him on the lips and chin. Yeah, I say, but before the word is out of my mouth, he's kissing me again. You know what? I forgot to feed the pills. Oops. Sam slips a hand under my shirt. What? What? No, what? Pressing his fingers against the uh, uh, flat of my stomach. His thumb brushes the edge of my hands, but alright. I didn't need this. There it is. Pinky slips beneath my bra. Why? What happened? To I don't. I hate my life. Ever since we first started dating, I knew I wanted Sam to be my first, but something always stopped us. Can I skip this chapter? To tell you what, you will know if I skip this chapter, mostly because I will skip this chapter, but anyway. He moves his hand around my waist to my back. He slides his hand farther up my, farther up under my shirt and raises the back of my bra. 
I don't know how it happens exactly, but suddenly I'm pressed against the cold brick wall, and then we're on the ground, and Sam's on top of me. I don't like this. The tunnel floor feels rough against my back. Cold sweeps up through the concrete and chills the skin beneath my thin tee. Shirt, I'm assuming. I try to shift my weight to the side, and my elbow brushes against the metal train rail. This isn't how I imagined it would happen. But then Sam moves from my mouth to my neck, leaving tiny kisses along his shoulders. I can't remember why we were waiting anymore. We love each other. I am not comfortable with this. I do not condone this behavior. No. Absolutely not. Maybe because I'm wearing a red shirt, my hair is looking much more vibrant. What do you guys think? I need to stop getting distracted. The sooner I get done with this chapter, the sooner I can get done with this chapter. A single candle flickers a few yards away, and a slow song starts over the speakers. I can't hear the words, but the beat vibrates through the ground. Sam moves his hand to my jeans, hesitating near the zipper. I... I... I um, um... It's okay, I whisper. I reach for the edge of his t-shirt and push it up. Revealing his flat, muscular stomach. I don't have that. I'm very fat. Sam flushes and pushes the shirt back down. No, it's not. He moves off of me and sits. We should talk. I sit up and pull my top back down. Sam's jaw clenches. He stares at the train tracks instead of looking at me in the eye. What's the matter? I ask. Sam still doesn't look at me. Listen, he says. I've been a wreck the last few months. Sam, no, you should hear this. He interrupts. I never wanted to break up with you, but I thought if I left, you might turn things around. I understand. I brushed my hand across his face. Or my face, what? And I did. The trust thing is going to be hard, I get that, but I'm not lying to you. No. Sam finally looks up at me. In the dim light, his dark eyes look black. This isn't about you, Casey. You were hurting and you needed help. I get that. I'm better now, I insist. And he squeezes my hand. I know, but I was hurting too. I did some things. Made mistakes. All at once I understand what he's trying to say. I drop his hand, feeling suddenly cold. It was someone else. Oh no. Oh no! I know where this is going. Although, considering what it is, I think it's kind of obvious. Let me know if you figured it out before it gets revealed. He stares at uh, me, eyes bleeding, just once. It didn't mean anything. Who was it? The question beats at my temples, but I can't ask it. I think of all the gorgeous girls crowding around the stage during Sam's concerts. I picture one of them touching him, kissing him, and anger flares inside me. Not knowing is bad, but knowing could be worse. It doesn't matter, I say, and I try to believe that it's true. Oops, how did you get in here? Sorry, Boots is one of my kids. I kiss Sam, but he doesn't kiss me back. Casey, he says. I shake my head. No, all that's behind us now. I kiss him again, harder, trying to bridge the space between us. We were broken up. It doesn't matter. Sam presses his mouth to mine, and his tongue slips past my lips. Uh, I melt it to him, trying not to think about who he was with or our breakup, or anything else. I pull him close. He's Sam. I tangle my hands in his hair and wrap my arms around his shoulders. All that matters is that we're together again. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Someone clears her throat. I pull away, looking up. Shanna is standing over us, one eyebrow raised. Sorry to break up the hot makeout sesh. 
Session, okay. She drains what's left in the red solo cup she's holding and tosses it to the ground. Sam pulls himself off with me, his cheeks flaming. Hey, Shanna, he mutters, adjusting his shirt. Hiya, Sammy. Shanna says, I frown. Sammy? Um. I stand and stumble over my feet. I reach for the wall to steady myself. Wow, Shanna says, snickering. Still enjoying that little treat I gave you earlier? Treat? I round on Shanna. You're unbelievable. Casey? Sam stands and grabs me by the shoulders. I yank my arm away. I've never hit anyone before, but I have a sudden urge to slap Shanna across the face. Confusion flickers through Shanna's eyes. What's your deal? she asks. What's my deal? I echo. You drugged me. Shanna's mouth curls into a smile. You're welcome. What's the matter with you? I say. I'd always known Shanna was impulsive and a little bit selfish, but I had never seen her cruel before. Jeez. Take a pill, she, uh, uh, Shanna mutters. You used to be fun. Fun? I grit my teeth together. That's your idea of fun? Shanna moves closer, forcing me to take a step backward. Precious, she says in a too sweet voice. We're at a party. I was hoping you relax. Relax. The, that word dropped something loose in my memory. Something I tried to forget. A night out with Shanna was always epic. That didn't always mean it was fun. For a while last year, she dated this guy named Jasper. <sighs> no, not Jasper. He was probably in his 20s, but looked older. He had a face like a catcher's mitt, all cracked leather and deep lines. Shanna liked him because he had a motorcycle and a tattoo of a naked mermaid on his bicep. I never liked him. His eyes lingered for too long, and he had a way of touching you when he didn't need to. Shanna dragged me to a party at his house once. She said it was a barbecue. I figured we'd hang out in someone's backyard eating hot dogs and drinking beer. But Jasper's house didn't have a backyard. It didn't even have a front door. Shanna and I... Well, how does that work? Push past an old stained sheet made our way into a dark living room without any furniture. I would imagine not. What was it? A couple of guys who were up in a... No, never mind. Sorry. Sat on a bare mattress, smoking pot and drinking whiskey right out of the bottle. The strung out girl with greasy hair snorted a line of coke off of a piece of cardboard. Relax, Shanna said. It's a party. Have fun. She kissed me on the cheek, and then she and Jasper disappeared into a back room, leaving me alone. I closed my eyes, forcing the memory away. After that night, I swore I'd never go out with Shanna again. But she called the very next weekend, talking about some insane concert that we couldn't miss. Before I knew it, I was texting her pics of outfit possibilities and asking her when she'd pick me up. Sam's words echoed through my head. You acted like a diff- uh, you acted different whenever you hung out with her. It's like the girl I loved was gone. This is what he was talking about. The second I got around Shanna, Shanna, I became the kind of girl who allowed herself to be drugged by someone who, uh, who she thought was a friend. I was stupid and desperate. A sidekick. I'm done, I say. Shanna lifts an eyebrow. With what? You. I cross my arms over my chest, willing myself to be strong. I thought this kind of stuff just happened, but it's you. You're like a bad luck charm. I'm sick of it. I'm a bad luck charm? Shanna shakes her head, her lips twisted into a humorous grin. Who were you before I came along? Suburban soccer Barbie? What's wrong with living in a suburb? I don't really like Barbies. Where was I? I pushed past Shanna before she can say another word. She stumbles back, almost tripping over a train track. It would have been funny if she like fell over and hit her head and died. Death by falling over. Watch it, she snaps. Or what? I rake my hand through my hair. What can you possibly do to me? Oh no. I stared down the dark tunnel, back toward the party. 
I've only got gone a few feet when I step onto something small and round. It shoots out from under my shoe and rolls across the ground, pinging against the nearest train track. I'm not sure why, but I hesitate. A prickle of familiarity crawls up my neck. I pull my phone out of my pocket and aim it into the darkness. Julie's black onyx ring glimmers from the ground, reflecting the light back at me. What's that? Sam walks up behind me as I bend over to pick up the ring. Cold creeps into my legs and seeps through my body. If Julie's ring is here, then Julie was here. This is Julie's, I say, holding up the ring for Sam to see. He takes it from my hands. You think she lost it? He asks. Uh oh. No, I say. Julie never takes this ring off. It belonged to her grandmother. If she lost it, she'd be on her hands and knees in the tumble right now. Unless something happened to her. Casey, no. Sam sees the look of horror across my face and shakes his head. That's not what this means. I saw her, I say, my voice trembling. You were high. It was a hallucination. I snatch the ring back from Sam's hands. This is real, I say. Shanna comes up from behind Sam. Done with your tantrum, she asks. When was the last time you saw Julie? I ask. Shanna shrugs. I don't know. A couple of hours ago? A few hours. The image of her lying on the floor of the tunnel flashes through my mind. I see the dried blood on her tank top, the gaping wound in her chest. My knees wobble beneath me. We have to find her, I say. Now! Um... Oh, well, let's see. Nah. Chapter's not quite short enough for me to go ahead and read another one for this one. Okay, this one's gonna be really short. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that was horrifyingly awkward, especially for me. I don't know how you guys felt about it. Um, do you think they won't be friends anymore after this? Will one of them change for the better? Will the other one go back to being worse? Do you think it's who I think it is that Sam was with? Um, hopefully all these questions will be answered soon. Uh, if not, I'm going to feel really disappointed. Anywho, until next time, goodbye everybody, and I hope you don't do drugs.